Everybody, that Drew Lyon here with part two of our paddle project. So the last time that we were here, the uh, paddle had a couple problems. One is I couldn't get these stand sanded smooth enough. I still had a lot of tool marks around some key places like these holes, places that would even splinter a bit. That's definitely not good. Second thing is the angle that was on this handle before was a little bit too sloped, making it very difficult to choke up on that handle. The third issue was one of counterbalance. I had a lot of wood up here, not a lot of wood back here, and that made it difficult to swing and actually hurt my wrist when I did. So I've tackled these problems in a couple different ways. First is, I did go ahead and I went out and I purchased a power sander, and I got a new sanding wheel. Uh, between those two, I was able to go ahead and get these holes really nice and smooth. So uh, now there's really no uh, sharp edge here at all. It's, there are no tool marks. It's uh, excellent, smooth, and slightly dimpled into the surface, which is great. Second, I went ahead and I did use the jigsaw again, and I did go ahead and I cut out a newer, sharper angle on that handle. So that really makes it nice and easy to choke up on. Definitely something to consider when you're designing your project. Third is the counterbalance issue. This took a little bit of figuring out. Uh, I did go ahead and I found uh, that these steel ball bearings that I have, three of them, was exactly the right amount of weight that I needed to counterbalance this. In fact, if you uh, do go ahead and use the new fulcrum on that and uh, tie it up, these are pretty much going to balance this thing out perfectly uh, when everything is said and done. I have a little bit of force down here just simply to hold the bag on, but at the same time it's pretty damn near close when I uh, tie it up. So what I've done is I've cut three semi-spherical um, grooves in here, and I did that actually using this new sanding wheel. It was a bit of a time-consuming process, trying to get everything to match up right, but I did go ahead and I've gotten that done. So now, now I'm going to finish this project out, uh, re-sand it to the, uh, the high grit, and then I'm going to go ahead and epoxy in these three steel ball bearings on the end, which are going to make this a much better project overall and a much higher uh, caliber piece. It's going to swing perfectly. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get on to sanding with the super high grit and uh, get this guy finished up, tack cloth, and ready for, uh, ready for the uh, stains. So what I did is I did a small scale test of the finish I'd like to go for. This is uh, polyurethane covered red oak with um, using India ink as the stain. So as you can see here, I've kind of got the first stage lined out. I've got my entire paddle staining black, and then I'm going to be going back, sanding through, and then re-staining red. So um, hopefully it'll come out nice. This has been sanded down to 600 grit prior to, um, uh, prior to the staining process. So I'm going to give this a little while to dry, and then we're going to go ahead and sand it down, and we're going to try uh, getting the re-dye in with the red. Alrighty, so I think I've got my sunburst pretty good. You can see it is still got some streakiness, things like that, but I think the next coat of uh, finish will really help, uh, I'm sorry, the next coat of dye will help even out these tones because it's going to kind of re-wet the original, so it should really help blend everything together. Um, overall, I think it's coming out together pretty good. It's also nice, it's a lot more resistant to... Uh, uh, water and things like that as I've been kind of wiping it away and things like that. It's still got a nice 600 grit finish and it should turn out very well. Alright, now I think I'm going to go ahead and add some red. You can see I already kind of added a light coat of red. Definitely was not near red enough for me. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just go directly with ink through these down this wood here. basically smear it around. Go ahead and just go directly. 
directly on the rash here instead. Exactly the kind of finish that I'm most wanting to go for here. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip it around. And do the same on this side. I'm going to go ahead and use the um, dye concentrate that I made. This is still um, India ink. It's just simply a little bit watered down, but not much. Definitely much more watered down than I thought, though. soak in, really get nice, then we're going to kind of do a, just sort of an overall red-black wash, just to further blend all these uh, colors together, and then we're going to uh, start the polyurethane process. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm simply sort of barely brushing on a little bit more black because I wanted to make that su uh, sunburst just a little bit stronger. So, what that simply is, I've got a little bit of my black here on a rag, and I'm gonna get a little bit more, just so it's fairly damp.
and any parts I don't like, how black they've become. Simply going back with a little bit more red. Just sort of almost giving it hand painted. I mean, obviously, if we were doing this professional, we'd be using like an airbrush or something like that to get even smooth lines, but because I don't have one of those, we'll do what we can with what we got. stronger now and I like the way this red is looking so uh, we're pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and kind of continue messing with this I think a little bit more and uh, before we start the polyurethane process alrighty now we have our polyurethane this is the moment of truth where it's either gonna succeed or fail so time to uh, take the plunge like it's a success. What I'm doing is I'm dabbing into some of the deeper uh, grain just to make sure that that stuff gets coated well too. Wonderful. Looks like it's finally going to come out this time. I'm going to keep going with the uh, rest of the piece now. Do you see any bubbles um, in your finish when you're polyurethaning? Make sure to gently brush over them to pop the bubbles because a bubbled finish will not look good when everything is done.
stroke marks as possible. Finishes like Rome, not built in a day. We'll be adding a lot of coats to this. So just keep it gentle. Do you see any uh, ripples starting to form where it's sort of dripping down your paddle? Make sure to brush those out gently. Again, the goal is just to kind of get a nice, smooth, even consistency. There's no hurry, no rush. I'm going to take my work light. Now that I've kind of got a good coat going, I'll take my work light. I'm just going to make sure that every inch of it is kind of covered the same way. Good. All right, looks like we do have some streaking, but it's fairly minimal. So at this point, I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep going with it. It's not as bad as some of the other streaking that I've had, and so I think it should turn out all right still. All right, so I just finished the, uh, the coat. It's finished drying. It looks gorgeous. I'm just going to lightly take some steel wool now. I'm just going to try to get rid of any additional scratchy marks, things like that that I can. Being very light and gentle with it, not pushing hard. Just trying to smooth out the edges. Good. Now what we're just going to do is we're going to lightly uh, brush away. We're going to lightly brush away any uh, additional particles from the uh, sandpaper or the steel wool. I don't think we're going to go ahead and apply the next coat. All right, everybody. So the finish is done setting up. It's really nice looking. I'm, I'm really quite pleased with the deep red and the nice rich black. It's got a almost mirror-like shine to it, and I'm, I'm quite thrilled with it. Now it comes time for the handle. Um, so what we're going to do here is we are going to be wrapping that in leather. Uh, as you can see, I've got sort of my uh, parallelogram-shaped uh, piece of leather here that we'll be using to wrap this with. Um, and then we're going to use some of these strip uh, pieces that I've cut just to kind of um, uh, kind of nicen those up a bit more. So uh, what we've got is we're going to start out by uh, taking the short end of our parallelogram and wrapping that like so. Um, I'm just going to kind of give it a tight wrap here sort of down the end even though I'm not ready to fully affix it yet just because I want to make sure I, I, it's uh, in a good place. Now we're going to take one of our uh, just a tiny nail here to secure that in place. So.
good. And that's quite uh, tightly in there. I know this is not going to be going anywhere for a long time. So then we're just going to simply wrap down the uh, down the edge here. Great. And now we're in the place to uh, nail down here on the other end. Ooh. We're going to fix that real quick. decent and now we're gonna take our nail and same way we did up there we're just simply gonna try to puncture through both pieces of leather Make sure that's good and tight before I do it Kind of some scraps from some of the cuts that I made there. I'll just kind of hide that in the way I wrap it. And then we're going to do that same wrap right down here. I'm going to get my first wrap in. And then I'm going to nail. Nail's got a bend in it already. So before I continue hammering it, I'm just going to grab a new one. Pop it in the same hole. You know what, I'm not <sighs> These nails are not very good nails. Find yourself something better. Find yourself like an upholstery tack or something. Um, there we go. Alright. One more go.
And you know what? I think I'm actually just going to um, glue this other piece in place. And the reason I say that is because there's going to be these uh, metal balls coming off the end for counterweight. And so here I'm going to go ahead and use some of these, um, some of these, and honestly I have no idea how they work. Um, it's going to be a learning experience. Um, but I think down there I'm going to, um, I think down there I'm just going to leave it plain because it's already going to have that, uh, that steel down there, and at which point I'm just going to secure this with some glue. Um, I'll be right back. All right, so I decided to contact cement. All right, so I decided to contact cement this side instead. Um, for the kind of the final wrapping there. Um, if it becomes an issue, I can always nail it later. Um, but I'm going to use contact cement here because I want it to, um, I don't want to show a nail. So we're just going to contact cement that area. And really, I probably should have contact cemented that whole um, wrap down, but. Um, you know, I would just prefer to not glue things, making it easier for me to undo it if I find myself wanting to redo something later. Good. Yeah, and that's going to hold it very nice and tight. So, good stuff there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to see if I can figure these guys out. And uh, I'll show you guys what I do. All right. So I did go ahead and I've marked out where I want these embellishments to be um, on my leather piece here by kind of wrapping it around. This is, of course, going to be the end of that leather piece. You can see sort of the um, holes that I'm going to be popping in there real quick. And we're just going to this a little bit deeper. Perfect. So now I'm just going to take my little X-Acto knife here. I'm just going to poke a couple of small holes just to kind of help get those uh, started. Good. Last one's good. All right. So now I'm just going to be able to slide these guys right on through my piece of leather here. And then I can just simply fold them back. I'm going to use a pair of pliers just to kind of make sure they're folded good. 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 ahead and fold that one in. Good. Just kind of folding this back out to make sure that the leather stays flat sort of on this side. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and add the
So I've got three nicely centered pieces there. I'm thinking I'm going to add maybe two more. Sort of uh, give it a diamond motif, or a, a plus sign, I guess, really is what it is. Excellent. Now we've got that one in, and I'm going to go ahead and measure around, knowing that this guy kind of has to be the center point of the uh, final part of that strap. I'm just going to kind of measure backwards from it. those in a little bit more. Okay, good. Um, I think that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to start making my marks. Basically here, because of what's going on, I just want to mark center, knowing that it's going to be covered. And then I'm going to mark ah, the first point sort of around that that I want to be the next uh, first piece there. Again, same thing as before. Poke a hole, poke a hole. Pop it through. I say pop it through. Bending them in. Good. So now I'm just going to kind of mark through all my holes now that I have sort of my center point anchored there. I'm just going to pop those holes real quick. Be sure not to nick your finger on this. It would be pretty easy too. Actually, it's, it's all right. It's not too bad. It is homemade gear, after all. 
found to be a few small mistakes. Okay, that looks good. So again, knowing that this one's center and the other one is too, I'm just going to start by, I'm going to nail this side down carefully. Just to make sure everything does stay good and secure here, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to give it some contact cement here. Side some contact cement too, and up the side too. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me show it. Just giving it some contact cement, keeping it nice and secure for whatever comes this toy's way. Alrighty, and then I'm just going to try to center that up a bit. Great. Now I've got a nice handle. It's got some embellishment on there too. Kind of liking how that looks. Uh, next stage, I'm going to be gluing on my counterweight balls here to the uh, to the end. So I will be right back while I kind of get set up for that. All right. Now comes the point where I'm uh, most actually nervous here. Uh, what we're going to be doing to show you guys, I'm basically going to be I made these sort of uh, semicircular or semi-spherical uh, sockets for these three balls because these three balls are the exact amount of counterweight that's needed to balance this uh, paddle out. Uh, you don't need to add counterweight, but if you do, it will make it a nicer thing to swing and um, really I, I think it kind of makes it a, a complete better, higher quality package. So I am going to go ahead and do it. Um, but gluing spheres is, uh, is a little bit difficult and ch challenging, um, along with the fact that they're heavy and they're steel. Uh, so there's several kind of things. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to use uh, five minute epoxy. Um, I'm doing five minute epoxy. I, I kind of went back and forth on whether I should use five minute or 30 minute epoxy or two hour epoxy. You know, there's tons of different varieties, but I went with the, th the, the three minute because, or the five minute because it will be able to hold what it is that I'm doing, theoretically. And it is, um, I mean, I'm basically going to have to hold this thing till it sets. So, um, with that being said, I, I didn't want to have to hold it all night. Um, 
So as you can see, I've just kind of mixed up equal parts of the hardener and the resin, the same way you'd get out of any epoxy package. Some of them will pre-mix it for you. I go through this stuff so much that I have to buy it in bulk and the bigger size. So as you can see, I've got a little space between my thing and this piece of paper, so any drips are caught there. And I'm just basically just giving it a nice coat. And I'm going to dab a point on my sphere here, on my ball bearing, with the epoxy as well. And I'm going to try to let this stuff tack up for a little bit. And I'm going to use my pool over here of epoxy as sort of my guide on whether on how tacky it really is. Because you don't really want to touch this stuff. It will get everywhere. So I'm just looking at the part that I've kind of pre-mixed up here. And I'm trying to see how goopy it is right now. And I'm starting to drip. So I'm just trying to catch that here with my, uh, with my stick. I don't really want to have any epoxy drips places, but it's starting to kind of get tacky now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place my sphere, and I'm just going to hold it. All right. That's pretty dang secure. Kind of giving it just a couple more squeeze downs making sure it's solid in that joint. I'm also going to kind of flip it over, take a look at the epoxy mess that's undoubtedly at the other side. I am going to go ahead and, yeah, all that's gone. Yeah, that's gone. Um, ooh, ooh. and sort of mix up my next batch for my next ball. And then I'm going to kind of use some of that to fill in this gap there on the end. that set up a bit before we actually use it. nice about using a bamboo skewer like this, I am to mix this, is that you can typically use the point to feed the epoxy where you want it. Whether you drip and just, you know, drag a line across somewhere, or if you poke it into the crevices, it'll typically be a good way of just setting it up. Great, and it looks like it's going to hold, and it looks like I've got minimal cleanup. So that's how you're going to attach a counterweight like mine. Uh, obviously, I mean, you could do a number of different things. If you, have, if you didn't have much weight to counterweight, you could use something like a large bolt and bolt through your wood. You could add studs or screws down the line. You could do any number of things just to kind of counteract that weight. Uh, this is just the method that I've chosen. Obviously, you do whatever you feel is right and matches with your project. Bubble. Always try to pop any big bubbles you may see in your epoxy. Um, but uh, obviously, just um, 
counterweight is definitely a good thing to have. Um, I just did some balancing and some playing around with these. That's kind of how I came up with what I'm doing here. But honestly, counterweight's a pretty open subject for however you want to handle that. Um, I'm going to keep working on getting these uh, counterweights added, guys, but it's pretty much just going to be the same thing of uh, epoxy hold. Nothing too special, really. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and uh, cut it off, and we'll do a little bit of, I guess, a wrap-up, I guess. All right. Hey, everybody. So we're on to the last stage in finishing, which is, uh, which I love, is the wax coat. Um, to kind of compare the difference, this side I did go ahead and I've already wax coat, and you can see it's just got a beautiful shine to it. If you look at the grain, it's really reflective. Um, the uh, the other side here has not been wax coated. You can still see some some pitting. It's still very nice. It's still pretty, but it's definitely not all the way finished. So wax is a really great way of kind of finishing that whole process. Uh, waxing is really easy. This right here is just simply a, a paste furniture wax. Um, and basically all you got to do is just simply rub, kind of dig some in there, get, get a bunch on a piece of cheesecloth or just a fine rag. And what you're going to do is you're just simply going to apply it evenly, and I want to say almost thick, over your whole surface. Because um, that's going to get it into all the little cracks and crevices and, uh, and little bits around here. Great. Go ahead and get some more on there because I can still see some places that are missed. Great, excellent. You can see there are some places that have uh, some paste kind of in the holes there. Uh, all you gotta do is just simply kind of squeegee that into the hole and you'll get it out. Um, just because we're getting so close to the end, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep going for now. Uh, but then you wanna go ahead and kind of rub it off, kind of give it a basic rub down. Just taking off some of the excess here. You can dig into the holes a little bit if you want to. And again, I'm going to run the rag through those holes here when we get closer to the end. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do another thick coat. Great. Now I'm going to switch over to something a little bit sheerer than this. Because this will still kind of leave lines. What I'm going to switch to here is just simply paper towel. And I'm going to go ahead and use Fender Guitar Polish. Just give the whole thing a decent coat, decent soak. And I'm just going to rub it out. see what that did. It really highlighted out the grain very nicely. Um, wax coats are a softer finish, so you may have to kind of come back and re-wax this, maybe every couple of months, maybe after a really heavy scene, something like that. And again, it's just sort of wipe on, wipe off um, finish. It's, it's pretty good. It's versatile. Uh, also does a fairly good job at resisting oils. Uh, but I'm going to kind of do this a couple of times just to make sure I build up a nice wax coat here. And uh, from there, it should buff out very nice. So that's the last step, guys. I'm going to do one more uh, video just to kind of wrap it up, really uh, highlight this uh, paddle a bit. And uh, then it's pretty much done from here, guys. Um, All right. So to kind of wrap up the paddle project as a whole, um, I think the paddle turned out very well. 
Um, there are some small problems with it. You can see there's some uh, finish uh, drips there, things like that, that happened during the course of the making of the paddle. But ultimately, I'm really happy with how it came out. I, I, I think it's pretty great. Uh, there's a couple problems with the finish, but uh, I think I've kind of learned from some of these mistakes. Um, the handle turned out really well. Again, I've learned a lot from these mistakes up here with the epoxy. It's, uh, it's good, it's, uh, it's nice, but it's definitely not as professional looking really when it was done. Um, ultimately though, this is a great toy. It's going to be useful for a, a number of years, and really the usefulness is what matters the most. Um, I thought I'd also go ahead and show uh, a paddle that I just finished for a, a good friend's birthday. I'm going to her party tonight and giving it to her. But um, this paddle right here is also made out of the same red oak. There's a major difference in how I finished it, though. Um, this right here was finished with the India ink and water. And as you can see, there are even still some sort of blotchiness aspects to what's going on. Um, this is mainly because the ink ended up being a coat. It was almost like a paint, really, when it was done. Um, what I did here instead is I actually used India ink and, uh, and uh, alcohol, the kind of rubbing alcohol you can get at, at any old store. Now, that made this really seep into the grain, so you can actually see a lot more of the grain detail. And it looks much more luminous when you light it up. When you light it up, it, it really just sparkles. Um, I also did this one in two stages. My, my initial goal was to make a sunburst uh, like, like my paddle, uh, but the difference here is that it, the, uh, the denatured alcohol really just didn't want to cover the same way that the water-based water uh, uh, in the ink stain worked. That did make it seep into the grain quite a bit, and as you can see, the, uh, she wanted a green. So between the green and the black, I ended up with this really um, unique sort of weathered finish on it. You can see there's some, some cool green deep inside the, uh, the lines, the grain of the wood, and the rest of it has been finished off with a nice uh, overall brown tone. Uh, I think it looks pretty great overall, really. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. Um, her dom, who's, uh, who's a good friend of mine, is also very happy with how it turned out. Um, another major difference up here is rather than going with the, the leather-wrapped handle, uh, I actually went instead for a plastic handle. Um, this handle kind of may look a little bit goofy. Uh, this plastic is um, an excellent product out on the market called Instamorph. Um, Instamorph is uh, kind of plastic beads. You heat them up in hot water, and then they uh, turn into something you can mold by hand. Um, so what we did instead is we made a, a sheet of the Instamorph, and we applied a real thick sheet to the, uh, the edge of that handle. And then I had her dom um, grip down on it hard. So this is actually one-to-one -one fit to his hand. This is literally as good of a fit as he'll ever have on any sort of a grip. Um, of course, I did a little bit of extra knot work there up in the top, just kind of uh, two uh, double coin knots. But honestly, I, I think this finish worked out quite a bit better, and you can also see there were some, some drips. So as final observations go, I think the main thing is that I need to avoid experimenting on my finished products. Uh, I mean, both of these were excellent pieces, but I used a lot of techniques that I, I had read about, learned about, but hadn't applied yet. And so I encountered a lot of frustration when trying to do these techniques. And although they, uh, they did turn out well, they could have easily gone south. So my main thought here is uh, if you guys are going to be making a paddle and you guys aren't exactly sure that you're doing it the 100% way that you want it or that it's going to come out 100% right, get some scrap wood. Do a small scale test of everything that you want to do to this wood first. Carve it, sand it, stain it. Uh, and then put a finish on it, see exactly what it is that you want to do when you're done, and um, then you can definitely uh, uh, make a better product because you'll know exactly how that process worked. Um, but great, guys, that's it. Again, uh, please let me know of your projects. I'd love to see the things that you come up with. And uh, as always, I'm looking for new ideas for new shows, so be f uh, feel free to drop me a line if there's anything that you want to see. Uh, again, guys, thanks so much, and... Um, Look for another video next week.